Hello friends and welcome back to Swift Lessons for another Music Theory Guitar Tutorial. In today's session we're going to be examining basic chord harmonies and how they're constructed using the notes within and adjacent to the major scale, in this case the key of C major. All in all in this lesson I'm going to be breaking down the anatomy of major, minor, major 7, dominant 7, and minor 7 chords. Let's get started. Okay, a close look at the fretboard. Our goal for today is to memorize the intervals that are within basic chord harmonies, getting started with the major chord. So a major chord, sometimes called a major triad, is built from the first, the major third, and the fifth notes of a given major scale. We're gonna be looking at everything in the key of C, so we're gonna have C major. Okay, so this is a C major chord, third fret barred position. Now we need to know each of the intervals that are inside this chord. Okay, now I already mentioned that we have a one, three, five harmony here. So if I compare this chord to the major scale in the same position, I'm gonna be able to tell exactly which interval we have on each string. Okay, so that's C major scale in third fret position. There it is in two octaves. Now if I compare that to the chord, I can see that the first note is the root of my chord, so that's the one. Now the next note that we have inside the chord, that's gonna be my fifth interval. All right, I can compare it to the scale. One, two, three, four, five. All right, then moving on to the next note inside the chord, the fifth fret of the G string. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's the octave, the repeat note of the first note of the scale. Okay, so that's not going to change the name of the chord. So I've got one, I've got five, I've got one again. All right, then on the B string fifth fret, it's the next uh, chord tone. All right, this must be that major third the note inside the chord that makes it major. Okay, we can compare it to the scale. One, two, three. All right, now I check and see if that note and the third match, they do indeed. So this is the third of the chord and I can check it with the second octave too. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. Fifth fret of the B string, that's the third of the chord. All right, then finally, going on to this uh, third fret high E string, that's gonna be another five. Okay, I can check it using octaves, or I can also check it in the second octave. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there we have it. The C major bar chord shape consists of the one, the five, We've got another one, we've got the major three, and we have another five. A one, three, five harmony. Okay, that creates a major triad. Okay, now moving on to section two of this lesson, breaking down the basic minor harmony. So the basic minor triad is a variation in which the third chord interval is flatted by one half step or one fret's distance. So that means we're just taking that major chord shape, find in the third interval, and flatten it down by one half step. Okay, we put that into the chord and we have a C minor chord shape. Okay, so breaking down the intervals, we have the one, we have the five, we have the one again, we have the minor third, also called a flat third, and we have the five again on the high E string. A C minor chord shape. Okay, so now we've memorized the intervals, the anatomies of two very, very common, probably the most common type of chord shapes. The major, a one, three, five harmony, and minor, a one, flat, three, five harmony. That's something that absolutely every musician needs to have memorized. Okay, very well done, everybody. Now we're jumping into section three of this lesson. We are done with the three note triads. Now we're jumping into four note harmonies, getting started with the major seven chord. 
So major seven chords can be thought of as extensions of the basic major triad in which the seventh scale interval is being added to the harmony. So I'm gonna count up seven notes in my C major scale to reveal the note that we need to add to the C major chord to make it into a C major seven. Okay, so C, D, E, F, G, A, B. There it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The fourth fret of the G string. We need to add that note into our major triad. That's gonna turn it into a C major seven chord. Very jazzy. So I've got the third fret barred, A string to high E string. I've got the uh, fifth fret of the D string, the fourth fret of the G string, and of course that major third on the fifth fret of the B string, being sure to include that high E string third fret with my bar. Okay, the very jazzy C major seven harmony, a harmony of one, three, five, and seven. Okay, now jumping into section four of five, taking a look now at the dominant seven chord harmony. So the bluesy dominant seven chord is just a variation to the jazzier major seven chord harmony that we just talked about. The difference between the two is that in the major seven, we're including that unaltered seventh scale tone to the chord, making it very jazzy, very smooth. But in the dominant seven, we need to flat that note, that seventh scale degree, back one half step. The result is this kind of question chord, very cool, very bluesy kind of sound. All right, so I'm barring the third fret, A string to high E. I've got the fifth fret of the D string and the fifth fret of the B string, that major third, right? Okay, that gives me that harmony of one, three, five, and flat seven. And if we take a look at each interval that we have on the strings, we have root, the fifth, the dominant or flat seven, right there on the third fret of the G string. We've got the major third, and we have another five or another fifth interval. Okay, so one, five, flat seven, three, five, going straight through the chord. And now just as an extra tip, if you're ever jamming over top, of that dominant seven chord, know that if you're flat in that seventh scale interval, it's also going to change the classification of the scale into what is called a mixolydian scale. So taking the major scale, flatten the seventh, turns it into mixolydian. All right, that's gonna sound great over top of that dominant seven chord. Okay, excellent work today, everybody. Now we're jumping into section five of five, taking a look at minor seven chord harmonies. Now the minor seven chord harmony, very cool sound. This chord is going to include both the flatted third and the flatted seventh scale intervals. Okay, so this minor seven bar chord shape, I'm barring the third fret of the A string to the high E string. Lots of pressure there, thumb nice and low. I've got the fifth fret of the D string and also the fourth fret of the B string. Okay, in this case, C minor seven, but it's every single minor seven chord in the book, you just gotta move from fret to fret. Okay, so consulting our major scale, even though this is a minor chord shape, the major scale is always the reference point for everything in music. So we can figure out the intervals of this chord. We can see that we still have the same root note compared to the scale. We can see that we also have the fifth scale interval, one, two, three, four, five, unaltered. That makes a little power chord shape. Okay, we can also see that next we have the third fret of the uh, G string, which if you remember from our dominant seven chords is the seventh note of the scale, flat it back one half step or one fret's distance. So one, five, flat seven with the bar on the third fret of the G string. Okay, next. We've got the fourth fret of the B string, which as we learned with our minor shape is the minor third. You find the third note of the scale, flat it back one half step and compare. 
All right, and you can see that we've confirmed that fourth fret of the B string is the minor third. Okay, so one, five, flat seven, flat three, and then of course, which we've learned throughout this lesson, that third fret of the high E string, that is going to match the fifth scale interval to create a minor seven bar chord shape, in this case, in the key of C, because that root note is a C note. Okay, very good, everybody. Now that we've learned the anatomies of our five basic chord forms, let's do a quick bit of review. We started off with the major, a one, three, five harmony. All right, then we moved into the minor, one, flat three, five harmony. Then we moved on to major seven, a harmony of the first, third, fifth, and seventh notes of the major scale. All right, then we had the dominant seven, a harmony of one, three, five, and flat seven to create that dominant seven chord. All right, then finally we had the minor seven, a harmony of one, flat three, five, and flat seven. Okay, so five basic chord forms right there. We now understand the intervals that are inside each of those chords. We also understand their relationship to the major scale, sometimes pulling notes directly from the scale, other times flatten some notes to get some more exotic, more interesting harmonies like the minors and the dominant seven. Okay, so I challenge you all to memorize uh, those five basic chord forms. It's prerequisite learning for a lot of other subjects. And I'm going to have a follow-up lesson for you where we study some more complex harmonies. All right, friends, thanks so much for checking out this music theory guitar tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. As always, big thanks to my supporters at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. Hope you're enjoying all those extra resources. And thanks to you guys, I got many more lessons coming up. So keep checking in. Please subscribe, please share. This is Robert Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia saying happy picking.